In previous lectures, we've seen various different kinds of data, including different kinds of quantitative variables, things like those life expectancies in those different countries and territories around the world, or things like the estimated age differences from those skeletons. We've also seen some categorical variables, things like which region of the world are those countries and territories in, or what's the sex of those skeletons. In this lecture, we're going to get a first look at how to consider the relationships between these different variables. Relationships, in some sense, are at the heart of statistics, and we're going to study them a lot. For now, we're going to begin with a simple introduction. To start, let's again consider those 197 different countries and territories around the world and their life expectancies. We've already studied these numbers, and we know how to summarize them with the five number summary, or with a box plot, or we computed things like their mean and standard deviation and so on. But we also said for each of these countries and territories, they fit into some region around the world, and we divided the world into six different regions. Now we want to ask, what's the relationship uh, between these countries' life expectancies and the region of the world that they're in? For starters, let's consider comparing two specific regions. Let's consider comparing uh, East Asia and the Pacific with uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, we might think that maybe life expectancies tend to be larger in East Asia and the Pacific as compared to Sub-Saharan Africa. So let's see if we can figure out if that's true. Well, we can start by looking at the countries and territories in each of those two regions. Now, in the East Asia and Pacific region, there are 30 countries, and their median life expectancy and their mean life expectancy are both approximately 73 years. In Sub-Saharan Africa, there are 49 different countries and territories, and their median and mean are both pretty close to 56 years. So right away, we can say that the sort of center of the data is quite a bit higher in East Asia and the Pacific as compared to Sub-Saharan Africa. But that's not necessarily the whole story. For example, if we look at the minimum value out of all the life expectancies in East Asia and the Pacific, it's only equal to 62.48 years. Whereas if we look at the maximum life expectancy in Sub-Saharan Africa, it's equal to 77.65 years, which is a lot more. So it means that the highest life expectancies in Sub-Saharan Africa are certainly a lot higher than the lowest life expectancies in East Asia and the Pacific. Let's consider a little further. If we look at the first quartile of the life expectancies in East Asia and the Pacific, that works out to just under 69 years. If we look at the third quartile of the life expectancies in Sub-Saharan Africa, then that works out to a little over 59 years. So in other words, the first quartile in East Asia and the Pacific is quite a bit higher than the third quartile in Sub-Saharan Africa. This provides some pretty clear evidence that most of the life expectancies in East Asia and the Pacific are indeed larger than most of the life expectancies in Sub-Saharan Africa. We can see this a little more clearly if we make box plots for each of the two regions and put them side by side. Here we see a box plot for the life expectancies of the countries and territories in East Asia and the Pacific, and right next to it, a box plot for the life expectancies of the countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. And looking at these two box plots, we can say that sure enough, most of the box plot for East Asia and the Pacific is quite a bit higher than most of the box plot for Sub-Saharan Africa. So this tells us that, yeah, we were pretty much right. It seems that for the most part, life expectancies in East Asia and the Pacific are indeed higher than life expectancies in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now let's consider another comparison. Let's consider comparing again East Asia and the Pacific, this time to the uh, South Asian countries. Well, in this case, the South Asian countries have a median and a mean, which are both pretty close to 67 years, which is a little bit less than the 73 years for East Asia and the Pacific. 
So maybe life expectancies are a little bit lower in South Asia than in East Asia and the Pacific. Well, we can also look at other information. For example, remember the first quartile in East Asia and the Pacific was just under 69 years, whereas the third quartile in South Asia is over 70 years. So it means that in this case, the comparison isn't quite so clear cut. On average, maybe it's true that the South Asian life expectancies are a little bit lower than the East Asian and Pacific life expectancies, but the quartiles don't completely order themselves in the way that they did before. Again, we can see this more clearly by looking at a box plot. Here's a box plot for East Asia and the Pacific as compared to South Asia. And we can see that sure enough, each of the quantities of the five number summary are a little bit higher for East Asia and the Pacific as compared to South Asia. But just a little bit, and the box plots kind of have a lot of overlap to them. So this is a case where we might say there's a little bit of an effect from region, but we're not sure how significant it is. Later on, we'll get into statistical tests that in a case like this will allow us to compute whether the difference is just the sort of thing you might expect from the fluctuations of different countries or whether it really does illustrate a fundamental difference between the regions. For now, we can say that East Asia and the Pacific appears to have slightly larger life expectancies overall as compared to South Asia, but it's not so clear cut. Let's also consider comparing East Asia and the Pacific to the uh, Middle East and North Africa. Now, this is a case where the medians and means for both regions are all very close to 73. So if we just look at the center or location of the data, we'd say these two regions are pretty comparable. But if we look at a box plot and see them side by side, we notice something interesting. Sure, the medians are almost exactly the same, but there's a lot more spread in the data for East Asia and the Pacific. For the Middle East and North Africa, the data is mostly concentrated quite closely around the median. Indeed, the interquartile range is only 2.15 years for the Middle East and North Africa, whereas it's 8.86 years for East Asia and the Pacific. Now, if we look at a modified box plot instead of the two regions side by side, then we can see a little more. Most of the Middle East and North Africa data is indeed concentrated very closely around the median, and that's why the uh, quartile boxes are so small. But we can see by those little circles outside the extensions that there's a few countries in the Middle East and North Africa which have very high life expectancies and a few countries which have very low life expectancies. So we see that in this case, the center of the data is pretty comparable, but actually the spread of the data is quite different. If we want, then we can do a box plot of all six regions all side by side. Looking at this box plot, we can see that Sub-Sahara Africa does indeed appear to have the smallest life expectancy of all six regions, and South Asia appears to be a little bit lower than the others, and the other four all appear to be fairly similar. Now for another example of considering the relationship of a quantitative variable and a categorical variable, let's return to our old friends, the skeletons. Remember that we have a data set of 400 skeletons. For each one, we have the difference in the estimated age at death as compared to the actual age at death. That's a quantitative variable. We also have some categorical variables, like for example, the sex of the skeleton, whether it was male or female. Now we can ask, is there a relationship? That is, does the sex of the skeleton have an effect on this difference? Well, we know what to do now. Let's go straight to considering side-by-side -side box plots of the difference in ages for the male skeletons as compared to the difference in ages for the female skeletons. Looking at the box plot, we can see that the two sides are fairly similar, but they're not identical. And the female side, the values of the box plot are just a little bit lower, a little bit more negative. So it suggests that just maybe there was a little bit more negative differences in the estimated versus actual age for these skeletons when they're female 
as opposed to when they're male. Again, we'll have to see later whether this relationship is actually significant or not. Finally, there's another categorical variable that we've considered with these skeletons, namely their mass category, whether they're underweight or normal or overweight or obese. Well, let's consider all four of those cases and consider a box plot which considers the skeletons in all four of those classifications altogether. Once again, we can see that they're all fairly similar, indicating that there's not a huge relationship between the mass category of the skeleton and the uh, difference in the estimated versus actual ages, but there might be a little bit of an effect. For example, we can see that the uh, underweight ones are slightly more negative looking at the box plot. So it suggests that just maybe the differences are slightly more negative for the underweight skeletons as opposed to the other ones. Again, is that a significant change? We'll have to learn about that in subsequent lectures when we get more into the theory.